Hey guys, welcome to Ham Radio with K0PIR, my YouTube channel. Been a while since my last video, but I've been busy operating a mobile and portable. Uh, we did a special event for July 4th out in the Black Hills, and I operated field day over in the Badlands. I've been working on my camper and my portable shack. But I'm home now, and I want to show you a program that I've been using. This is Log4OM, and this is version 2.8. I have an article on my website, and it goes over installing it and the initial configuration. Okay, once you get it installed, let me show you what I like about it. And uh, this is just a brief overview of what I like. And once you get the initial configuration done, you'll see something like this. Uh, first, let's talk about rig control, and this uses Omni Rig. I can click this button here, and it brings up my Omni Rig. So when you're installing it, I suggest just go ahead and install it. It'll ask you if you want to install Omni Rig. I suggest just go ahead and doing it. Um, I've got my ICOM 7610 set up on COM4, baud rate 115.2, RTS and DTR are low. Now my radio is set up, and I keep it the same. With all of my software, the only exception is when I'm using a wind cure, and I'm not using the wind cure right now. It's out in my camper. But anyway, the rig control is the same. And the software, if you want to take a look at my screen captures, they're on my web page. You can find a link to them at the top of my website. And you get your radio set up, and then you can set up Omni Rig, and you'll have rig control. So uh, I really like uh, Omni Rig. It's it's neat. It's quick, and you know you don't have a lot of things that you can set with it. There's this is not like uh, HRD uh, uh, rig control uh, where you can change the filters and uh, uh, scan and all that kind of stuff. I switch from modes uh, from USB to LSB, CW using the software. Uh, I don't use it for that. I use the front of the radio for that. And this just uh, gives me the frequency, and it logs the frequency in the mode that I'm on. So, you know, that's, that's real simple. That's a real simple part about this, this program. Uh, let's take a look at another area. If you look at this area, this is the, where the call signs entered. I've got the oral entered in here. And uh, when I, when I uh, move out of that field, or actually if I just uh, let's type somebody else in there, uh, and uh, once I type in the call sign, it goes ahead and pulls it up. I don't have to do anything else. It pulls up the name and the location. But this area, this is for the log, and it fills in all the information. Uh, I set up the uh, configuration that way that it pulls it from qrz.com. And again, I've got, uh, got some screen captures on my website on that web page. Uh, we can take a look at it, quick look here, on a program configuration. And uh, the info providers, I'll click on that. And it's got QRZ in there. And then my second, you know, AMQTH. So that's, that's how I set that up. And then over on the right, it shows uh, some of the, uh, uh, my awards. You know, if I'm going to look for, uh, well, I've got the country uh, by a QSL, EQSL, LOTW. Uh, I've got it on 160, 80, 40, 20, 17, 15, and so on. Um, I don't pay a whole lot of attention to that. I'm not an awards type person. Uh, I'm not striving for awards, but you know it's good to have. And if the uh, if the call sign brings up a picture, you know, we'll go back to oral. Got a nice picture up there. A picture of the ship. That brings it up over here. And this is the recent QSOs. We can go over to the main, and it shows uh, shows the well, the world map, and you can see where he is. Shows a, a a closer map, uh, zoomed in. I can zoom out, and you can see how far away he is from me, 547 miles. I like uh, using this pane. And the recent QSOs. When I log him, he'll show up at the top. Uh, if I'm using the cluster, yep, I've got it going. You can see it down here. Got the cluster going. These are the spots that I have coming in. Go over to propagation. And I'm on 20 meters right now. So let's take a look at the propagation on 20 meters. And we're going to plot reliability. 
Let's see what it shows. Okay, well, I got a little bit out in there. A little bit. Can you see that? So not real reliable right now. If I go to my station information up here and change my power output, say I'm going to use my amplifier. 600 watts. Let's plot it again and see what happens. Okay, there you go. Well, it's a little bit better. And I like that. So my reliability is out in this section here. So this is a real neat, real neat feature of the program. Uh, the work before uh, shows all the other times I've worked at station. I like the software program. It's been working really good for me. And I've been using it on my little notebook computer with FLDigi and WSJTX. Getting those programs integrated into it, there's a little bit of a configuration that you have to go through. But once you get it set, it's good to go. And you shouldn't have to change anything. So uh, look forward to my next video. I'll have one on configuring those FLDigi and WSJTX. And we'll talk about some more of these features in the next one. If you haven't already, please click on the subscribe button below and click on that bell icon. You'll be notified when I put out a new video. And if you like the video and you find it useful, click on the like button below. And if you know somebody else that you think would like it, please use the share button. You can send them an email and it will have the link into it. So thanks for watching. 73 and good DX.